The concept of tower developments dates back to 2015. This particular development was started in 2017 as part of this policy. We now live in a different post-pandemic world. More than 50% of the flats are private. Savile's letter of 24 February draws attention to the success of Filmworks and strong interest from the overseas market. Who is this accommodation being built for? The concept of Towers and Ealing has developed ad hoc on a site-by-site -site basis. Contrary to, for example, Ealing's 2015 Community Involvement Policy and Policy D9 of the London Plan. There has been consistent vocal opposition to these trophy tower developments. They cast an overbearing shadow. The council in 2015 and the 2020 white paper said they would consult residents in achieving a community you want to live in. Residents don't think they're getting planning that cherishes the past, adorns the present or builds for the future as the applicants would have you believe. Nearly 2,200 objections have been lodged Case-by-case -case engagement with the public is not a substitute for required policy formulation. There has been consistent feedback that the tower block is too tall and overbearing. It would have a harmful impact on nearby listed buildings and conservation areas. In 2009, the Secretary of State turned down the 26-storey Arcadia Tower Block at Ealing Broadway, commenting on the harm to the Grade Two Star Christchurch. Why is this 26-storey tower different? It is even closer. The developers acknowledge the loss of sunlight and daylight for residents of Longfield and Apsley houses, some of whom are elderly and were persuaded by the council to live there. This will be significant for them. Their loss is swept aside in the balancing exercise. 10% of the flats are modified for wheelchairs. There are only 15 blue badge parking spaces, a shortfall of 33 spaces. Put yourself in the position of someone badly needing mobility. Even after tweaking, there is still a clear failure to provide family-sized accommodation for Ealing's poorest families, a need identified in your council's housing surveys. These families could not afford to live here. Worse still, the social and private housing elements are segregated from each other. You wouldn't dream of putting all the children on assisted school meals at a comprehensive school in one house and all the others in other houses, even if they wore the same uniform. But a borough that trumpets its equality policy is in danger of embedding this segregation. Ask yourselves why. There are clear grounds for objection to this application. It contains fatal flaws. This application does not cherish the past, does not adorn the present, and it certainly doesn't provide a future for Ealing's poorest families. The council continues to promote this development, notwithstanding these fatal flaws. Approval leaves you open to challenge.